Welcome to this YSL training video. In this session we'll teach you all about how to add criteria to queries in SQL Server. To do that we'll teach you about the WHERE clause. We'll begin by looking at how to add criteria involving numbers, including how to find numbers that fall within a certain range. We'll then move on to talk to you about text criteria, including how to use wildcard characters to find pattern matches. The last data type we'll look at will involve dates, and we'll mention a few things to do with difficulties involving date formats. And finally, we'll talk to you about how to add AND and OR operators to combine criteria together. So let's get started. Now, if you want to add criteria to a query, you need to include a WHERE clause, and that always comes in after FROM but before OR BY. So let me add in the word WHERE right there, and now I can start adding my criteria. Now probably the easiest type of data to work with in the WHERE clause uh, is number data. So what I've got here is a list of all of my films, including their running time in minutes. And to begin with, let's do a nice simple criteria. I want to ask for all the films where the runtime in minutes is exactly equal to 120. And it's as simple as that. You have the field name, the operator, which in this case is an equal sign, and then the value I'm interested in, which in this case is 120. So if I execute that query, I get a list of films where the running time in minutes is exactly equal to the value I've asked for. Um, now you can use a, a fairly standard list of operators here. If I wanted to find all the films that were greater than or equal to 120 minutes, I can add a, an, a closed angle bracket symbol, greater than or equal to, and that will show me this slightly longer list of films. I can ask for all the films that are just greater than, so that will exclude the 120 minute films. And of course I can use the less than symbol as well to ask for the films that are less than 120, less than or equal to 120, and so on. One last useful one I can do here is to use a greater than and less than symbol at the same time. So this will show me all the films that are not equal to 120 minutes long. So I'll see everything except for films that are exactly 120 minutes. Two more useful things you can do with numbers in SQL Server in a WHERE clause. Let's say I wanted to find values that fall between a certain range, or within a certain range. I can add a BETWEEN operator, where the film runtime minutes is between 120 and, let's say, 150. So, hopefully fairly unsurprisingly, the list of results I return fall within that range. So the lower limit is 120, and the absolute upper limit is 150. And the last useful thing that you can do in SQL Server is to find a list of precise values. So I'm going to use an IN operator to do this. So show me films where the running time in minutes falls in this list. Now you add the list inside a set of round brackets, separated by commas, and very precisely I'm going to look for that range of four numbers. So if I execute this query, the results I return are either exactly 90, exactly 120, 150, or 180. So those are the basic criteria you can work with when using numbers. The next data type we're going to look at in criteria is text data. So to begin with, I'm going to add a WHERE clause to my query again. And to begin with, I'll ask for SQL Server to show me a film with a specific name. So I'm going to ask for where the film name is equal to. Now one slight difference with text compared to numbers is that you have to enclose text in a set of single quotes. So I've opened and closed mine and then gone back one space to type in my film name. I'm going to ask to show me the film Die Hard. It's case insensitive, it doesn't matter if you use all caps or lowercase text or a combination of the two. When I execute this query, SQL Server will show me any films where the spelling is as I've typed it in. So far, so good. So searching for a specific piece of text is relatively straightforward. But what if I want to do something more complex? I want to find any films that have the word Die Hard in their title. There's two changes I need to make to my criteria. First of all, I need to change the equals sign into the word like. Now it's worthwhile noting that like can be used in place of an equals sign when you're looking for text. If I execute this query again, I'll see exactly the same result like operator becomes more useful when you combine it with what are called wildcard characters. So I'm going to add a single wildcard character, this time the percentage symbol. Now the percentage symbol represents any number of any characters. 
So what this is searching for basically is any films that start with the word Die Hard followed by anything else. If I execute that query, I'll get three. The original Die Hard, because a percentage symbol can represent no text at all, followed by Die Hard 2 and Die Hard with a Vengeance. I can add extra percentage symbols in there as well, available at the start. This will now find for me any films that include the word Die Hard anywhere in their title. So if I execute that query, I get four Die Hard films. Now there's one other useful wildcard character you can use as well as the percentage symbol. So first of all to demonstrate this I'm going to change my criteria to look for the film Lethal Weapon. And when I run that query I get the single film. If I added a percentage symbol to the end of Lethal Weapon and execute that I get all four Lethal Weapon films. I'm going to change the percentage symbol again now and I'm going to replace it with two, one, two, underscore characters. If I execute this query, what you should see is that the film Lethal Weapon disappears. And that's because each individual underscore character that I use represents any single character. So each Lethal Weapon sequel, effectively, has a space followed by a number, and that's what I'm looking for there. The last thing that we can do with the like operator and wildcards is find all the films that don't include a certain phrase or string of text. So to begin with, let's, uh, let's look for films with a particularly awful title. There's one. If I execute this query, I'll get three horrific films that I want to exclude from all my future results. Now, if I was looking for exactly the word Twilight, I could exclude that single film in the same way I excluded numbers earlier on. I can use the not equal to operator to exclude Twilight. What I really want to do is exclude all of the films with the word Twilight anywhere in their title. And in order to do that, I need to include the not like operator. So if I execute this query, this will show me all of the films apart from the three ones that I absolutely never under any circumstances want to see. So that's text criteria. The last data type I'd like to look at in terms of criteria is dates. And this is the easiest one to get wrong, mainly because of the date formats that SQL Server uses. So I've already executed this query here to show me a list of films including their release dates. So what I'd like to do is find any films where their release date is exactly the 7th of April 1933. This is the standard way that SQL Server represents dates. It's year first, followed by a dash, then month, dash, day. So, if I look for dates with that exact same layout, that exact same format, so it's year first, dash month, dash day, dates are enclosed in a set of single quotes just as text is, if I execute this query, everything works happily. Now, you have to be very careful because the temptation is always to use the format of the, the regional settings on your computer. So here in the UK, if I was going to write that date in a standard format for the UK, I'd be saying 7th of the 4th, 1933. And if I execute that query, I don't return any results at all. The reason for that is that by default SQL Server will recognize dates in this format as uh, US formatted. So I'm actually looking for July 4th, 1933, rather than 7th of April, 1933. That's one thing that you have to be very, very careful of. If I flip these two numbers around, 4th of the 7th, 1933, and execute that query, I return the right date. Now things get even more annoying if you look for things that happened after the 12th day of the month. So again, here in the UK, if I was going to look for things that happened on, let's say, the, the, the 22nd of May, I can type in 22 slash 5. If I execute this query, it doesn't just return no results, it falls over completely. I get an error message telling me that I'm looking for an out of range date. That's because by default, SQL Server is looking for something that happened on the fifth day of the 22nd month. Now, it takes a little bit of getting used to, 
but I guarantee that the best way to add dates to a criteria in SQL Server is in the same way that dates are represented to you. Year, month, day with dashes separating the component parts. Okay, now that bit's out of the way with pretty much everything else works in exactly the same way as numbers do. So if I wanted to find, for instance, let's say I want to find all the films that were released in my database after the last day of the 20th century, so 1999-12-31. So show me all the films that were released after the 31st of December 1999. And there we go. So here I'm showing all the films since the year 2000 effectively. I can also look for films within a certain range. Uh, so I can look for dates that fall between, let's say this time, 2000-01-01. Uh, and the last day of that year. So that's 2000-12-31. So this will for, find for me all the films that were released in the year 2000. The last useful thing that you can do with dates is look for specific increments of time. Now this involves using a couple of useful functions. Now let's say that I wanted to find any films that were released in the month of May. What I need to do first is calculate the month of the release date. To do that there's a very handy function available called month. So if I write in the word month and then in a set of round brackets add in the film release date, I can ask where the result of that calculation is equal to 5. And if I execute our query, this will find for me any films in the entire database that were released in the month of May. There are two very other useful and easy to remember functions as well. An alternative way to find all the films released in the year 2000 is to ask where the year of the film release date is equal to 2000. When I execute that query, that's exactly what I'll get. And last of all, there is the day function, hopefully unsurprisingly. I can look for films where the day of film release date is equal to, let's say, 22. And that gives me all the films released on the 22nd of any month. So that's how dates work in terms of criteria. The most important thing to remember is the format that you use to search for dates. So far in this tutorial, we've shown you lots of individual separate criteria that you can use. What I'd like to do to finish off with is show you how you can combine criteria using the AND and the OR operators. So, so far what we've got here is a simple little query that shows me all the films containing the word STAR anywhere in their title. What I'd like to do is also include a criteria which shows those films that are released before the year 2000. So in order to do that, I can add an AND keyword. I'm going to go down to the next line to do this just to avoid having to scroll left and right on my screen. But I can add a, another criteria now where the film release date is less than uh, 2000-01-01. So where the film release date is before the 1st of the 1st, 2000. If I execute this query, in order for a result to be returned, it has to match both criteria that I've asked for. So the film name can name star, and where the release date is before the year 2000. And I can do this to combine as many individual criteria as I like. I could add another criteria now with another AND statement, and I can add AND film runtime minutes is let's say greater than 120. And if I execute this query, I'll limit my results yet further. So that's how you can use AND operators to add more and more and more criteria, which should return fewer and fewer and fewer results. So the AND operator lets you find single records that match all of the criteria you've asked for. You can use the OR criteria to find records that match any in your list. So I'm going to make a couple of quick modifications here. I'm going to look for films 
where the name begins with the letter X. I'm going to temporarily remove all of these other criteria. So if I execute this query, I can see I get three films. But I'd also like to see films that begin with the letter Y. So I'm going to add in a WHERE clause, uh, sorry, an OR operator, and look for films where the title or where the film name is like Y. If I execute this query, it will include additional records rather than filtering out the ones that are already there. Again, just like with AND, I can add in subsequent further queries, further criteria, and look for films beginning with the letter Z. I don't think there are any in this database. No, there aren't. But had there been, they would be included in this list as well. The last thing worth mentioning when talking about combining criteria with AND and OR is that the use of round brackets can affect the results. What I'm attempting to do in this query is show any films beginning with the letter S or T that are longer than 180 minutes. But that's not quite what I'm getting in my results. If I execute the query, what SQL Server is showing me, first of all, is any films where the running time minutes is longer than 180 minutes and that begin with the letter S. Additionally, it's showing me any films at all that begin with the letter T. So it's actually combining the first two criteria, but not the second two, which is what I want. So the use of round brackets can change the results if I wrap up my second two criteria in a set of round brackets, when I execute the results now, rather than returning 55 rows, it returns just four. So it's any films lasting for longer than 180 minutes and where the title begins with S or T. And that wraps up our tutorial on using criteria in SQL queries. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.